Hello students, and it is time for your third big project. It is time for rock, paper, scissors. Now I can tell you right now, 90% of this program is all if statements. There's only one, two lines up top that I wrote that are not if statements. And of course, a print statement at the bottom. But you know, we'll we'll get through this. So let's uh, run through here, run module. And it says, Rock, Paper, Scissors by David Monticchio. Rock is one, paper is two, scissors is three. Your selection is, you know what? I'm feeling good about rock, so I'm gonna hit one and then hit enter. Player picked rock, the computer selected scissors, player wins. Okay, well, yay, I won. Let's r check my luck again. Run module. Okay, I'll, I'm, well, rock was good, doing well, so let me hit rock again. You know, okay, player selected rock, computer selected rock, it is now a draw. Okay, well, you know what? I, I bet you what's going to happen if I, you know, run module again. And let me see if I can lose this time. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe the computer's picking up on it. One. No, I won again. But eventually, I can possibly lose here, and it would tell me that the computer wins, or, you know, you lose, or whatever. So, that's generally all it is. It's, we print this out, and then, once we have all that, and then, you know, we got all this. Bless you, whoever that was in the background. So, how do we go about making something like this? Now, obviously, I cannot show you everything. But obviously, we've got ourselves some print statements here, and the person, the compute, the the person is selecting a number, right? Well, you know how to input that, right? And then I'll tell you this: the computer has the exact same choices that we do, either a one, a two, or a three. And of course, the computer, being the fact that we're not going to have this computer actually learn from our previous choices, it's going to be a complete random number. So. They have a random selection of three numbers, and then we're going to have to check to see if their number defeats our number, because one is equal to rock, two is equal to paper, three is equal to scissors. So as long as you got that part down, the rest of it is just if statements. Now if it helps you out, I highly recommend you draw it out, because this is the first time where really if you think of tic-tac-toe, not tic-tac-toe, of rock, paper, scissors, there's actually nine different possible outcomes. There's rock to rock, rock to paper, rock to scissors. There's paper to rock, paper to paper, paper to scissors. There's scissors to rock, scissors to paper, scissors to scissors. Because we have two different people playing it. So there's nine potential outcomes. So you're going to have to figure out how to track all nine possible outcomes. And I recommend, this is where we bring back our good friend Draw.io, and I'm just going to make myself a couple of nodes here. So think of it like this. We have our player choice, and I'm just going to make the player choices in blue. Okay, just for the sake of making this, you know... Oop, it's loading. Command, command, there we go. So we've got ourselves three different options here, right? They can either pick, you know, paper, which... Let's uh, up that font size a bit so everyone can see it. They can either pick paper. They can either pick rock. And they can also pick scissors. Right? Those are the three potential options our player can pick. And of course, if you want to get technical, we can say they could pick something outside of it, and then we can just have an else that says error or whatnot. But for logic speaking, we've got rock, paper, and scissors. All right? Those are the three options we've got. And so if this is true, you know, we would do something. But if it's not, we'll check to see if this one's true. And if this one's true, we'll go over else. But if not, we'll check to see if this one's true. And of course, what does the computer have? The computer has the exact same options. So, I will, you know, say, we could have, check to see if it's rock to that. Or, we could check to see if not, that. Or, that. And we can just do the exact same thing 
for these next two options. Check those guys, check those guys. And we'll check these guys right here against that guy. So take a look how this works. So let's just say we've got ourselves an arrow coming down from here in our, lo in our logic. It's been going down like that, and yay. So if true, we would move over here. If not, and if, then of course if true, we would go like to that, to whoever wins. Or if not, we would have, you know, say, an arrow going down that way, or an arrow going down that way. And if true, we'd have something going over there. If true, we'd have something going over here. And that would be the extent of that logic. But if it's not rock, it's not going to get to any of this, right? Because none of that would be true. So we just go down to paper. And paper could go into that. And if that was true, it would go over there. But if not, it would, you know, say, go down here. And if paper was true there, it would go down there. But if not, it would go down to scissors. And if scissors was not true, it would go, it was true, it would go there. If not, you know, okay, well, that, we'll just like, check this branch then. And we'll go down like that. So realistically, you could do it this way, or if you want, you could have, you know, and by this way I mean this type of way of using nested if statements in a sense, because this is kind of what this is representing. Or, you know, maybe you use an and. If rock and that, if that is rock and that is rock, then this. If this is rock and this is paper, if you want to do something like this and you just have copy, if you want to just check it individually, line by line, like that, and have, you know, two things right next to each other, there to there, there to there, there to there, you could do that. You can use some AND statements instead. If you find that to be easier, checking them line by line like that, you could do that. There's many different potential ways to get this result. But at the end of the day, you're going to be using a bunch of different IF statements. And you're going to be essentially using something like this, where you're going to ask them for their choice. I don't know, I'll pick scissors. And I picked scissors, but the computer selected rock, so the computer won, and then it said the end. So you're going to be able to just track the logic, print out the results. Tell me what I picked, tell me what the computer picked, tell me the end result. That's essentially how this rock, paper, scissors game is going to work. So... I'm going to leave this one up to you. You already have all the tools at your disposal that you need. So, you know, look back at the previous if statement uh, assignments. See how you're going to be able to do it. If you need to, draw it on a piece of paper with the logic. Try to figure out where it's going to go. Because now we're starting to get into multiple questions at a time. So, we're going to go into that and... I'll be around to help everyone out, but as of course, I cannot type the code for you in this scenario. So, you're on your own on this. Good luck, and uh, come next week, we're going to start going into loops, okay? So we're going to have things start repeating over and over again until we tell it to stop. Thank you very much. You have a great night.